now that we're into counterpoint, we're going to get into the actual rules of counterpoint as well as when we know that we can break the rules because it's difficult to know when they apply and uh, when they can be broken. So here I have a comparison between uh, diatonic and chromatic. Hopefully you're already familiar with that. And then conjunct versus disjunct movement. Now uh, conjunct is, for those of you not familiar because it is kind of specific to counterpoint, conjunct movement is movement along steps along the prevailing uh, line of the scale. Uh, so as a, a very simple example in the in the scale of E major, it would be F sharp to G or uh, G sharp back to F sharp down to E then to D sharp. Those are scales along the E scale or steps along the E scale. Disjunct movement on the other hand is done in leaps and skips. So a minor third or greater would be a disjunct movement. And in general Diatonic is preferable to chromatic movement, and conjunct is preferable to disjunct movement. The first rule is not as important as the second one, especially as time goes on and the tonal center becomes more vague. Uh, but as for the second movement, conjunct being better than disjunct in general, I drew an arrow here because there are exceptions. So I have, have here what I believe are the, the five most common exceptions to that rule, that conjunct is preferable to disjunct. We're going to look at each of these um, in detail and uh, see when those exceptions can be made. So first, if a skip is made in the direction opposite that of natural tendency. Um, so what does that mean? What is the direction of natural tendency? Well, if we think about a graph, uh, say the popularity of a TV show over a 10-year period of time, the graph might decline a little bit and then go up and then down and up and down. So while there are ups and downs, overall the graph is going downwards. So that would be the direction of natural tendency for that instance. And the same is true of music because uh, along a melody line it might go up and down uh, in different directions, but overall it'll usually have one direction. So what the, this principle is, is that if the skip is made opposite that of the direction of natural tendency, that is preferable. Both tones are of the same harmony. So if a skip is made from, uh, if the harmony is in E major, the skip is being made from G sharp to B, that is much preferable than G sharp to D natural, uh, since those tones do not belong to the same harmony. Uh, okay, our third exception. If the skip is made following an accent, especially if the accent is on the tonic. So what does that mean? Uh, well, obviously, a note that's accented is going to be more pronounced than one that is not. So if a skip is made after the accented note, it's going to be uh, less noticeable, and especially if the accented note is the tonic because the tonic is the the center of either the melody or the piece in general or whatever it is. Uh, skipping to the other neighboring note. What are the uh, neighboring notes? Well, if the skip is made from uh, using the key of G sharp minor as an example, a skip made from A sharp to F double sharp, that would be okay because those are neighboring notes around the tonic, which is G sharp. Now, F double sharp is a half step below G sharp, and A sharp is a whole step above G sharp. So we have to be familiar enough with the scales to understand when it is, uh, what types of steps are neighboring notes. Because when it comes to dominance, a lot of times both neighboring notes are half step above and below respectively. So for instance, in the key of G sharp minor, D sharp being the dominant, the neighboring notes uh, could be considered E natural and D double sharp. Both resolve to D sharp, both are neighboring notes, but they're both only a half step above and below, respectively. The last exception, if the skip is part of a sequence. Uh, so if a figure is repeated over and over using that same skip, then uh, it's part of the overall pattern and it's not going to sound so odd. So these are the, uh, the five most common exceptions for that rule that conjunct movement is better than disjunct movement. Now, one other uh, point. 
there's a misconception that the the uh, resolution to the one or the tonic needs to be to the letter note of the tonic. Uh, what does that mean? Well, in E flat minor, um, the tonic is obviously E flat minor, but the harmony of the tonic includes two other notes. It includes E flat, uh, G flat, and B flat. So oftentimes the mediant is actually more powerful in uh, ending on that note of that harmony rather than the tonic itself because the, the median is what determines whether it's major or minor. Uh, so those are some of the, the principles we've considered for uh, beginning counterpoint, so we'll get into more of those next.